Yeah. 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 Somebody was trying to say, is your refrigerator running? You better go catch it. Uh-huh. Silly people. But in all those stories, what happened? What happened? Who protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? God. Who protected Daniel? Who protected? Who protected Peter? God did. This is our this is our memory verse today. It says the it's in Psalms thirty four. Go ahead, Tamara. Yep. Very good. Psalms thirty four dot dot eighteen. So brokenhearted means sad. Amen. Well, look, brokenhearted means sad. Who's ever been really sad before? Um, nobody. <laughs> nobody? <laughs> yeah, we've all been sad before. People in the world today are brokenhearted. But this says, this Bible verse says that the Lord is close. That God is with them. That God is with the ones who are really sad. And he's there to... Save for those who are crushed in spirit. So boys and girls, as we go through the rest of this year, as earth is hurting, as America is hurting, as families are hurting, we can remember that God is close. Yes, dude. Yeah, you can go to the bathroom really quick. And what I also love about the Bible story, and this kind of ties in the last week with praying together, Peter's friends were praying for Peter. It reminds me of this verse, and I didn't use this verse last week, but I should have. It's James 5, dot, dot, 16. It says this, Therefore, confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The power of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Do you remember what Mr. Doug told us the adults did a couple weeks ago? If you were here last week, Mr. Doug said the adults did something special, and they did something. Do you guys remember what, they did, what Mr. Doug said they did? Sarah? They prayed together. Good job, Sarah. They prayed together. Right, Miss Louise? You, were you there for that when you guys... I wasn't here last week. I wasn't here really well. Okay. Can well, I, they prayed... Yes, Elijah. Can I tell you something that I'm really excited for? In just a minute. Wait. All right. Huh? Do you want it just sitting there? He said it should be in the fridge, Andrew. Put it in the fridge. The week before, though, There we go, yeah. They prayed together, right? And they anointed people with oil. They prayed, because this verse, this verse says that when people pray together, it's powerful and effective. So when we know that somebody is hurting, or we know, because we, like we talked about last week, we're a family. I know, yeah, we, we, maybe we look different in each other. We're different ages, different heights, different grade levels. And then you got my weird self up here as a children's pastor. But we are a children's pastor, pastor, kids pastor, but we are a family. We are family. And we should be, when we know that somebody is hurting or suffering or in trouble, or we know somebody's family is hurting or in suffering or in trouble, we can pray for them. Like we talked about last week, I've known of many situations where your families have been in trouble, or you yourself have been in trouble, or hurting, or suffering, and me and Ann, or just, or broken heart, really sad, me and Andrew have prayed for you guys. And if you don't know what to pray when you're praying for those who are hurting, or suffering, or in trouble, just pray that the Holy Spirit comforts them. Like Elijah said, when we talked about being, about praying when we are sad, just praying for comfort for them. Because when you're really sad, sometimes you just want comfort. I'm going to tell you this true story here. What is this verse? That's a long verse. That's a long verse. All right. I don't know, remember why I put that on there. I want to read the long verse. I mean, I'll leave that long verse for me. I'm sure I put it on there for a reason. This may have been for next week. Oh, no, this is somehow comfort. Okay, I remember why I put this one there. Thank you, Lord. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So, 
it is a long verse, but what it's talking about is comforting. When you're hurting or suffering or in trouble, God comforts you. God gives you comfort. And then we can pray and comfort each other. And like I said, the Holy Spirit, He is a comforter. He, he gives us a hug. He, when we're feeling sad, He comforts us. And there's been times, there was, a, there was a time in my old church where kids in our kids' church, uh, their, their dad had died in a motorcycle accident. Yeah, yeah, I know. And they were they were bums. And they were bum and it, and it happened and it happened suddenly. Like nobody he wasn't obviously planning on that and that's why they call it an accident. Yeah, he was on his way home and he had this accident and unfortunately he well he's in heaven right now, so that's awesome. But unfortunately <laughs> un- unfortunately you know those and rightfully so those kids were broken hearted. And I remember our dad, man, and Andrew's dad, he, and even myself, we didn't know what to pray. And sometimes when you know people are hurting or suffering, because I've done this a lot of times with you, when I've been thinking about you guys too in your situations. I mean, another one would be Elijah and his family. Everything that they went through last year. What's that? Jojo was strong enough to pick He was a pretty strong kid. But sometimes when you're praying for people who are hurting or suffering or in trouble, you may, not know, you may not know what to say. And that's okay. It's okay to not know what to say. It's okay to not know what to say. And what we can do, what we can do in those times is we can pray, God... We can just pray, Holy Spirit, comfort them. Comfort that person. Comfort that family. They are in need of your comfort. And then show comfort to them, just like this super long verse says. And 2 Corinthians 1, dot, dot, 3 through 7. That's why it's so long. It's like, it's four different verses. But it talks about when we receive comfort, we can show comfort to other people. So here is the thing, boys and girls, as we continue to talk about prayer. When we are praying for those who are hurting. Hold on. And Miss Louise says it every time she's down here, and, I, and I'm so thankful for that because it's true. We need to be praying for each other. I mean, that's why we took up all last week talking about praying for each other. And like I said last week, and like I'll say it again today, there are a lot of people who, in our kids' church, in our church, and in in all of you adults upstairs who need prayer for each other. So as we get ready to close, remember to be praying for each other to show comfort to each other. For the Holy Spirit to show comfort to them. Because there are people who are hurting and suffering. And if if you are hurting and suffering, remember that God is right there with you. Just like he was for Peter. He sent that angel to rescue Peter. Just like he was there to rescue Daniel. Just like he was there to rescue Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God is there to rescue us when we are in trouble. He is close to a broken hearted. He is close to ones who are sad. So, with that being said, since you guys liked it last week, it's alright. I think we're going to do our prayer groups again. I think we do our prayer groups again. And this week, last week, we were just praying for any requests. And pretty much you're going to do the same this week. But this week, if you are in a, just a bad situation, or maybe a family member is in a bad situation, or maybe a neighbor is in a bad situation, or whatever it may be, because like we did last week, I don't want to talk about something and not give you a chance to do what we're talking about. I mean, I've spent really the, next, the, next, uh, the past two weeks, today and last week, talking about how it's important to pray to, praying for each other and with each other. And there may be some things in your family that is hurting you. Some situations. Maybe it's a health situation. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a, 
uh, your parent doesn't have a job right now because of all the craziness going on. It could be whatever. So here's what we're going to do. Again, we have this big room now. Pray for being down here. We have lots of space. So you can again group up with two or three people. I want you just to ask each other, what do you need prayer for? Is there a situation going on that's bothering you? Are you in tr- Is there a situation that makes you feel like you are in trouble? Is there a situation that makes you feel like you're hurting or suffering? And then just pray for each other. Pray for comfort for each other. And comfort them. So go ahead, because I believe church is almost over. I hear people moving around, so we're probably doing communion. So go ahead, grab a group of two or three, spread out, and just start praying for each other. And then at the end, we'll come and we'll, I'll close us out in a, in a prayer at the end. Well, that was easy.